Scott's another ruckman uh, joining uh, Lloyd uh, from East Perth. Um, great size and strength. Um, he competes really well, kicks it well, follows up. So um, yeah, deceptively quick for his size. He did 3.02 the uh, 20 metres, which is a great time at the, uh, at the combine. So you've showed uh, really good resilience to keep at it and finally get your chance. Can you talk us through uh, you know, what it's taken? Yeah, it's uh, been a bit of a long road. Um, in draft year, breaking my leg round one um, when I was 18 um, was really a bit of a bit of a shock and really set my uh, career and aspirations back a bit. I um, missed out in state 18s that year, and then which really took me 12 months to recover from that. Um, and then again, dislocating my AC joint in 2015, just as I was getting back to um, good form, which put me out for six months. Really, sort of reset the progress again. So I've um, really been happy in this last couple of years to get a two full pre-seasons at East Perth um, and they really come to some decent form and be able to stay healthy for a full year. We've got some uh, drafted some really intelligent boys with some of the uni courses and you know, some really high calibre uh, people but um, you're, we found out through the draft process you're studying a fairly unique course. Can you tell everyone yeah, about that? Yeah, I'm doing a Bachelor of Technology in Motorsports um, which is basically race car engineering. Um, it sounds a bit more complicated than what it is um, but it's just an intro to automotive side of engineering, um, which is really a passion for me, for mine um, outside of football. It's always cars have been sort of my side hobby um, with my best mate and always working on them and designing new parts and this sort of stuff. And that's a really sort of career aspiration for me for life after footy. Um, so that's something I definitely want to keep pursuing and to keep ticking off and doing as much as I can. Very good. We'll have some questions for Scott. Jonesy, that story we hear about you watching the draft with the East Perth boys just so you're trying to work out who's going to be drafted into the club. Yeah. Is that, is that true? And then suddenly your name got pulled out? Yeah, it's, um, yeah, with the form sort of towards the end of the year, sort of thought rookie draft was a possibility. So Friday night, wasn't really expecting it at all. Um, and yeah, we, the last couple of years we've watched to see through the alignment what teammates would get at East Perth. So yeah, we're watching that, but the, the boys are buying into the, everything a bit and got pretty keen. So Nathan yeah, put, a, put the laptop and record just in case anything did happen. And yeah, and then one of the last, and then the name getting called out and everyone sort of went berserk. So um, yeah, but those guys have been huge supporters of mine um, throughout the last year and the last couple of years. And so it completely wrapped for me to finally live out my dream and get drafted. So have the Dockers told you much at all in the lead-up? Did they give you a... Um, a little bit. I'd spoken to them um, towards the end of the year uh, and then found out, yeah, they were um, calling up and pursuing pretty hard late, but nothing really official in the last few weeks. So, as I said, I thought, yeah, Monday was my best hope. Um, but, yeah, to hear my name get called out on Friday in the National was huge and completely over the moon for it. So, Lordy didn't even... Keep you off the maybe watch the cup. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So, because I wasn't even, um, that's why I wasn't even watching it with my parents. They were still down in Bustleton, just sort of, um, they were coming up Sunday to, to watch it Monday if, if needed. So, so yeah, it was, as I said, pretty unexpected, but uh, happy times and the boys were happy they were able to experience it with me. Can you describe the story? Can you describe the feeling when you heard your name? Was it oh, sort of disbelief? Uh, absolutely. I didn't think at all, and especially after seeing Lloydie get picked up. Um, early in free, I already taken a ruckman. I sort of relaxed a bit and thought, here we go. Then I'd wait till Monday, and then yeah, um, getting picked 75 and hear my name get called out, and and yeah, just sort of thought, wow, this this is happening. So and then yeah, didn't really hear much for the next five minutes when all, all the guys went a bit crazy. So how long did it take to sort of get back to normality? Because it was pretty wild. Well um, it really hasn't yet. Probably not till first training session. Really, um, it'll really start to sink in. Even sort of uh, meeting the guys at. Um, Nat's house last night was still sort of a surreal experience and sort of walking out, sort of a weird sort of feeling like, oh, these guys are my, my new teammates and everything. And coming today and seeing the club and all the facilities is sort of a bit of a shock to the system, um, especially what I've gotten used to over the last couple of years. Uh, but definitely it's an experience that I'm eternally grateful for and can't wait to get started. Do, they, do your mates realise that you brush them out and you Yeah, there, there'll be plenty of that. They've been saying, yeah, don't forget about us and this sort of stuff. But oh, those guys are great mates of mine and huge supporters, so they'll be with me for most of my journey. And you'll be playing against them next year. Yeah, it's a little bit exciting. It's, I don't know how um, that's going to go, potentially. Um, I know um, well, the last couple of times, East Perth and Peel have been pretty, pretty tight games and pretty intense games, so I know... A few of those boys will probably be after me a fair bit. I know um, Paddy McGinnity has already said he's going to try and take me out before the your game starts. So, uh, But we'll see how it goes. And uh, it's going to be a great experience to sort of go back with and play against those guys. and But also to develop here at Frio and 
do as much as I can. The, the dream was so close to you when you were like 16 in the, the academy, and then you get injured, and yeah. you're so far away. What, what stopped you from kicking the cat and just and, and staying involved to... Um, to be honest, yeah, there were, like, especially in 2015, I remember round one, I was thinking, what am I still doing here? Why am I, this is too hard sort of thing. Um, but thankfully, Adam Pickering, my coach at the time, really kicked my butt into gear, got me doing extras and everything like that, and which reignited the flame. Um, and the passion came back, and I really started enjoying my footy again and just building up. And then this season has been the um, best, best year of my life. I've enjoyed it that much every weekend, been anticipating games and absolutely loving every single second of it. So it was a bit of a struggle for me, but I just knew um, that's one thing through the academy and um, Mickey Ablett and Kevin Sheehan told me that sort of Ruckman have got a couple more extra years, um, don't really get into our prime, so 24-25. So there's always that bit of hope in the back of my mind. Um, and then seeing Darcy Cameron get picked up last year after having a decent year um, at league and for a waffle in the waffle system really gave me confidence that if, if I get it together and have a decent crack at it, then who knows what could happen. So, Who was it at East Perth that made the difference for you? Um, Adam Pickering, definitely, um, especially and it was a reserve coach at the time. Um, yeah, it was a struggling along, but he sort of saw potential in me and really kicked into gear when it was sort of things weren't going too well. Um, and then definitely the senior guys with Craig Wolf and Paul Johnson last year, um, just their support as I was developing and sort of these guys believed in me, um, which I, but I probably didn't believe in myself too much. Um, and so with them to be able to push me along, and especially through this year with Paddy McGinnity and Kyle Anderson, the co-captains, really supporting me every game and boosting me along even through, as I was yeah, coming in, only played a couple of games and sort of it fell to me as sort of the lead ruck in some games and things like this. Um, so to have their support and them to believe in me was huge. The Eagles have a look at you. Were they talking about rookie? I'm um, not sure. Like, yeah, with draft stuff, you can you never really know too much. There's a lot of whispers and this sort of thing which you hear. Um, but yeah, as I said, I thought Monday may be a chance for a rookie somewhere. Um, and then yeah, so Frio were the first ones, which is um, over the moon for. And the motor racing stuff, I presume you don't drive. No, nah, ah, uh, unfortunately, I'm a bit bit too big to ever fit in any sort of racing cockpit so but uh, it's the uh, design and building side of things i um, always been well, my best mate he's a mechanic and we've always been building cars and modifying things whether it's our own cars or project cars or things like this it's always been our side passion sort of outside of footy uh, it's a great way that i find to unwind and sort of get back from the professionalism and stuff that through the um, footy system and it's always been a huge passion of mine that i really want to continue life after footy and you live with sandy I'm living, that's one thing, being the only local boy, I still get to stay at home, so I've been living with my sister um, here in Perth, so we'll conti continue to do that. It turns out the drive's not too far, um, which I was pretty happy about, but um, it's probably yeah, up for discussion over the next couple of weeks, just to make things easier on me. Scott, you did mention you're the only local who's taken upon yourself to show these guys around the sites of Perth? Or? Yeah, a little bit. Um, there were already a few of them were complaining about their son and trying to cover up when we walked out there, and it's an <laughs> overcast day, so they're getting going to get ready even the yeah, forecast I think it's high 30s in the next few days so they're really going to enjoy it so um, but yeah definitely it's a thing especially through East Perth I've sort of been building my leadership there um, even though it's, a, it's such a young team and still only been year 22 but I was still one of the leaders there um, so definitely with these guys with the, especially with them um, moving over sort of young 18 year olds and straight out of school and this sort of thing into a whole new environment um, whatever I can do to help to ease their transition into into WA I kept, I'll do it to the best of my ability. As tour guide, where's the top three landmarks you're going to? Oh, well, probably um, Cottesloe Beach is probably a big one. I know, yeah, um, the boys are saying that they're ones that have already been for a swim and already noticed that it's a bit different than Melbourne beaches. Um, hopefully we'll try and get them down south, being a Busseton boy. Um, it's a great place, of the, place of the little earth down there and um, wherever we can, but I think probably just get them in and about and see the, the city and everything and just sort of get used to it. And so it's a bit of a jump from Melbourne. Um, it's a lot more... I find a bit of a relaxed lifestyle and stuff here, so these guys will absolutely love it. Life is here. <laughs> yeah. Tell us a bit more about Busseldon and, and coming through there and, and what the country meant to you and playing footy against men and all that sort of stuff. Yeah, it was huge. Um, it's always like yeah, coming through juniors and um, I actually only played a little bit of footy with Busseldon because I started driving up to Perth twice a week to sort of play with East Perth and do state programs. So. Um, but definitely sort of that sort of environment was training with those guys um, and preparing to sort of go up against guys that's a little bit 
a little bit rougher down there. Um, not as many umpires, um, really, so that sort of you cop it a little bit behind <laughs> behind the play. But um, definitely, that, I've brought that into my game here in the, in the waffle, um, and, bit of, and used that aggression that I sort of developed down there um, as definitely a key factor of my game and something I'm really proud of with my roots from the country. And if you want to be a leader, you've got one of the best here in Sandy in terms of big fellas. So you yeah. Oh, absolutely. It's, yeah, it's a dream come true to get to work with one of the best ruckmen um, going around for the last sort of 10 years sort of thing. So I'll, um, like Lloyd, he said, I'll be learning as much as I can from him, everything to do with the ruck craft and off field and on field and professionalism of it. Because um, he's been one of the, other, the top tier and been the pinnacle of that in the last few years. When it comes to the picks from WA, there's quite a few country boys in there as well. Yeah. Is it just something in the water? Like country players, better players, do you reckon? Oh, I think it's... It's a little, little bit different. Um, I know the lifestyle is def definitely different, especially these guys, um, especially the guys from Melbourne. They probably don't see it as much. Um, but I think I find, especially like Connor Blakely is another one from Bunbury. Um, I think it was just the way it is. We just we do a bit more outdoors stuff and we're always sort of getting injured and this sort of thing and breaking bones and getting injured with friends and mucking around and stuff like that. And then coming in into sort of the other professional system and into Perth and it's a bit of a shock, but Oh, we love it and all the guys sort of appreciate us. We're a bit, a bit rough around the edges, but um, that's the way it is.